This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. This is Mike White, and you can find me at I am Mike White on Twitter. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Hello and welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, where a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com. No, wait. Uh, you can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com. Yep. More of our podcasts at ObsessiveViewer.com slash podcasts. And you can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And you can also support us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Obsessive Viewer. And today on the show, it's episode 336. Six and uh, Mike and I are talking about WandaVision with a special guest, Dustin Mattingly of As Good As It Gets. And uh, I already messed up my intro. Damn it! I was gonna. I had this whole thing. Okay, um, just do it again. Just do it again. Uh, yeah. no. I'm. I'm just gonna roll with it. No, I, no, you, you have to. I'm <laughs> not gonna say anything else. We've been again. excited about this do intro for weeks. <laughs> you said something. I want to hear it. Here we go. Shop Here we up. go. Here we go. Okay. And we have a special guest on this episode, and I would say that having the three of us on this, uh, having having you two on this episode for me uh, to talk about WandaVision, I don't, I, I think that this is as good as it gets. Not worth it. <laughs> Not worth Not it worth at it. all. <laughs> Not even. No. No, no, no. Lady it only would have been in and let them only, decide. Yep. It only would have been worth it if you went all the way back to the beginning and started the music I again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this Shut is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Hero. <laughs> the other thing is, like, I'm everybody's sixth favorite host, so this can't possibly be. I don't think that's true. Um,. I don't. I think for the ten dollar Patreon pa- patrons, I'll ask them uh, to rank the hosts. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, do a vote. Yeah. <laughs> rank uh, the hosts and then rank the special guests. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that's fun. Ooh. So, uh, okay. So, Dustin, you're here today on the podcast to talk, for us to talk about WandaVision and everything. How have you been? The last episode you were on, uh, you've been a guest on the podcast before. It was episode, what was it, 94, 95? Episode 94, bonus episode, February 12, 2015. Yes. Ooh. That's yes. right. Was that Long just the episode? Uh, well, uh, there, no, there was another mm. one uh, the year before. It was yes. uh, with Hoi Polloi. Yep. Okay. Um, but the last one was that's right, like six years ago. Yeah. And what so, did we you know, talk about? Uh that what? was what? we were talking about the news of Spider Man joining the MCU, right? Yes. And we yeah. and we were discussing whether or not we would see him in Civil War. So <laughs> real quick, I have a rundown of information, updates nice. for any of the uh uh you know, the true tried and true obsessive viewers out there Mm -hmm. obsessive viewer nation if if you will (laughs) um so first i want to say um i still have never used the twitter i am mike white too um i actually tried to find it i don't know if it's still there or not i don't know if it's still there um i forgot my twitter information so i can't get back on uh also we still haven't won a grammy you know Mm -hmm. we discussed that last time um, I was right about that second EP, right? I told you if you liked the first, you'd love the second. Oh yeah, nice. and I'm I'm pretty confident that uh, that I've been right about that. Mm-hmm. Um, also, my sister does not do wedding photography anymore. Ah. Just so everyone knows, don't don't look her up. She's not doing it. Um, well, she's tired <laughs> of all the the emails. Oh, peace yeah. and love, peace and love. No <laughs> more emails, please. Yeah, uh, Lundy's lawn care no more. Um, he doesn't own the company. He just does freelance lawn work. So uh, you could probably still get him, but I, he doesn't. Own oh the my god! I'm just like yeah. I'm just catching up to remembering that part of that episode. Oh, it went on forever. <laughs> it went on I for listened. such a long time. It went on forever. Um, also, Fantastic Four sucked. Oh yeah. It sucked, oh, you know, yeah. we talked about it and it sucked. Mm. Um, moving on, are we going to talk about Black Mirror? I'm hoping we're going to talk about oh, Black yeah. Mirror. No, inside joke. Listen to the episode. Right. Um, Iron Spider suit. We did not get it in Civil War as as we mm. talked about, but we did get it in Homecoming. We right. got it at the end of the first one. 
we so that's got something. a suit built by Iron Man, but I hesitate to call it Iron Fire. Are you kidding me? It's mm. got the... What are, you, are you... What are you it's smoking? Not, I don't, it's, it's fine. Go You're ahead. You're wrong. You're wrong about that. Um, then I have to say... Oh, uh, it was it was talked... Mike actually asked me, is it enough to just have Spider-Man in Civil War if he's not like a pivotal part of this plot? I want to say it was worth it, Mike. It was worth it. It was worth it. I agree. Yeah. It, it wasn't a huge pivotal part of the movie. He did not need to be there, but it was worth it. They yeah. did a good job with him, and it was yeah. a fun introduction to the character. Didn't they I was have... The guy... Sorry, didn't didn't they have like a a backup plan if they couldn't get the rights to Spider Man? What? Oh, uh, I think I read that it was going to be they were going to bring in Daredevil from the show, oh, okay, or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's. I love Charlie Cox as Mar- Matt Murdock, so I would have been fine with that. Me too. But I, I remember yeah. in the theater uh, when it set. So there's like title cards throughout the movie, mm-hmm. and um, I guess I'll brag. I'll brag. I'll brag. Whatever. I know Spider Man <laughs> is from Queens. Mm-hmm. And when the title car, it's New York, and it says Queens, I was like, "Whoop!" I was the only person. <laughs> in the you just knew it. You just knew it was nice. coming. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And the last little thing I'll touch on here is we did get scrolls. Oh we yeah, did get scrolls. Um, oh, and guy. I don't think I don't think that it devalued the Shitari because we got a whole. You know, the scrolls are a more in depth care, like you know, character mm-hmm. as a whole in the MCU anyway. Um, and we're getting a secret invasion, which we discussed um, that a little bit. We're getting that. Although none of us saw Disney Plus coming, which leads us right, right to Wanda Vision, baby. Nice. Nice. That is perfect. Um, yeah. yeah. That... Put them on the go. <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. I don't have anything else to say before we get into our review. Any any new business or anything? How are you guys doing? First of all, let's... let's I, I didn't any even ask. Any new like, business? Yes, any new business. <laughs> um, how are you guys doing? Um, and uh, what did you think of the Patreon stuff we recorded? It was great. I, I had a have fun to download time. that stuff. If I you, feel if... like you don't get the complete show unless you're a Patreon subscriber and you get the pre-show. Nice. That's Patreon. Right, gotta get that, gotta get that pre-show. Yep. Gotta get that pre-show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> And if I will you get the pre-show, you'll get double, the joke, okay? Double up on the underwear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, but I'm staying. Uh, it's out there. And Dustin, how have you been just in general and everything since uh, your last appearance and everything? <sighs> since six years ago? Six, six Man, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> lots happened. Nice. Um, uh, you know, I got a degree. We released two EPs in a full nice. length. Um. I I got um I think I started fostering dogs since then. Nice. Like, I've gotten two more dogs since that Jeez. since we last had that and then um mm. since I was last on the podcast and I I fostered probably over forty dogs. God, that's awesome. Uh, in the last four years. Wow. Um and I don't know. Keep making music. I just got a new job. I've changed jobs a couple times oh, since nice. then. Congrats. Just started a new job this week. Oh, I'm pretty happy shit. about it. That's awesome. Nice. Congrats. Uh, I think I'm gonna love it. Mm. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm 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 um I'm flying high right now. Sweet. That and I get to talk to to these two handsome debonair gentlemen. Well, you know, I I did get a haircut you know a few we... weeks ago. <laughs> so. I was gonna say. <laughs> you know what we failed to do in those six years is release the uh, the something borrowed covers EP. Yeah, which I which we had talked about. First, we were just gonna do covers, and then we just got, talked about doing covers of um, themes of theme songs for for shows. Yeah, and that's oh, really man. what I'm. Oh man, just like a, it was just done like 10, 20, 30 second long songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's been like super cool to just. Oh, yeah. I love this track. I love this one. My immediate thought of that is like. I would start a podcast and use each one of those as like a different podcast opening theme music. (laughs) Well, yeah. One of our podcast ideas, which also never came to Mm. fruit, uh, was that we were going to do a songwriting podcast where every episode we would would write a song. I'm going to go on record and say I would still love for you guys to do that for sure. Well, now that Dustin's got his nice little setup at home, Mm -hmm. I'm not saying oh, yeah. it's impossible. And, you know, yeah. I just think people need more Mike White in their lives. I, I, I had a student, student yesterday was like, Mr. White, you put out a lot of stuff, and I don't even know where to find it. 
<laughs> it's uh, a lot. There's a lot of me out there. Well, the world can do with uh, with uh, can always do with more Mike White. Um, this specific no, Mike White. Um, that's what he. I tried to pitch him a, a podcast mm. idea, and he shot me down, Matt. Oh, I didn't shoot you damn. down. He shot me down hard. Then I told him I, I was just going to let's hash gonna it out. Let's hash out the I, drama. I, you know I did not shoot you down. I told you to circle around. I told you to circle around. We're not ready to land, but I did not shoot you down. He's like, let's put a pen in it. Let's just put I a pen in it. it. <laughs> Listen, I have a YouTube show with my brother. Yep. I have a show, a, a podcast that I do here with Matt once a month or so. Yep. Yep. And we're I'm still... What? I'm not hearing any. This is all excuses. We're, like we're yeah. working on an album. <laughs> we're working on. We're literally working on two albums right now. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I told you, just do one a month. <laughs> wow. so, one every two months. I just something to do it by month. Can we, can we put it under the obsessive umbrella? I mean, we'll have to get the lawyers involved in everything, but I, I think that could be that could be doable. Um, <laughs> Can we trespass on your right? right. <laughs> well, he hasn't even heard the idea yet. Okay, you want to hear it? Yeah. It's a podcast sure. about nothing. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I could, what I could you definitely. Do today? Um... No, this is the podcast. I will this is the podcast. Breakfast. That's a show. Yeah, this is what it. Is Just that. That. Oh, um, I'm not going to green light that in the room. But uh, we will uh, maybe get it. Maybe get a development deal going. So... Well, the idea, the idea, actually was themed to this episode. Actually, a little oh, bit. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, this is our this is our pre uh, pre podcast launch preview episode. I guess nice. My, the backdoor my, pilot. Yeah, my pitch was that we um, watch basically the movies in the MCU, and every single episode we just talk about one film, and then at the end we each rate it out of six infinity stones <laughs> and also discuss, you know, which infinity stones are missing and why in relevance to, well, it was kind of dumb, so we can't give it the mind stone. You nice. know? I do. I have... do like that. I do like that a, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, so. everybody's talking about the world needs more white guys making podcasts. Well, I mean, talking about absolutely. Comics and movies. Yeah. Talking about comics. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. The median age for podcasters is 34. So, <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so before we get into our review and everything, uh, yeah, I want to give you guys a, a uh, platform to to um, promote your work online and everything as good as it gets, your YouTube stuff, everything. So, uh, why don't you tell the listeners where they can find all of your work and what they can find of you out there and your OnlyFans? <laughs> well, I'm not, Dustin's on the OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Yep, you can find me. Just keep looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving you any more than that. Just keep looking. You'll find me. It's out there. Yep. Uh, thank you, Matt. As always, you're so mm-hmm. great and so gracious about giving us a platform to talk about our stuff. So, Dustin and I, well, we've been making music together for 20 years. We're coming up on 21 year. I guess we're coming up on 20 years. Wow. I think we're coming up on tw- on 20 or 21. I know in the last episode I was in, you said you knew me for 16 years, which would put you knowing me at yeah. for 22 years at this point. Jeez. Yes. That's amazing. Well, uh, okay. I, I will say we, we wrote our first couple of songs 21 years ago. We had a handful yeah. yeah. of joke songs that we that we wrote uh, just the sleepovers before there was even a thing as a band. So he is my, he is my creative life partner. Um, and we've been in this uh, current project as good as it gets uh, for about six or seven years. Um, and you can find us anywhere you find music. Uh, the band, again, is called As Good As It Gets. We have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash as good as it gets music, where we put stuff up uh, every eight days. Uh, just today, as of this recording, March 11th, we posted uh, a music video uh, from our original band, Thank You Jade, using footage of us playing the song uh, as well as recording that very song in the studio. So there's a fun scene of like, there's a shot of Dustin singing the actual part that you hear, uh, which is a fun little uh, thing. So I posted that on the YouTube. Awesome. We do cover songs, we do old songs, we do live streams, we do all kinds of stuff. Uh, I would like to pitch, if I could, 
uh, our Patreon, patreon.com slash as good as it gets where monthly we post an exclusive acoustic track where we take one of our old songs from our catalog rework it in an acoustic fashion uh and release it there we also do some goodies along the way and if you like what you hear you would love our patreon.com slash as good as it gets finally this year 2021 our plan is to release two full-length records can you believe it nice I would say by the end of summer, you'll get that first one. And I've pretty much already kind of, the, the cat's out of the bag. It's Thank You Jade songs. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put that out there. So we're excited about that. Full length awesome. CD. Uh, and I'll have more. I'll uh, Surely I'll come on this, uh, on the show and, and, and talk about that when that comes out. You, Maybe we'll have to. Yeah. You damn well better. Um, so yeah. I mean, you, all you have to do is hit me up, man. I'm, nice. I'm, I'm always free for you. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, awesome. I, I, I have a deep love for you, Matt Hurt. Oh, thank you. I'll never, I'll never forget the time we talked about Sherlock at Pat Coon's wedding. Oh, yeah. I looked deep, I looked deep into your eyes, and <laughs> we've had an unbreakable connection since. I don't remember talking about Sherlock. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess Yikes. this is it. I guess this is it. Right? Yikes. <laughs> I was a little nervous about bringing my friends together, but uh, <laughs> it's it's over now. Right. Never again. I'm just playing hard to get. Um, I know you so... are. Okay, should we go ahead and start reviewing this the show? Let's talk about. It. <laughs> yeah, let's okay. go. Let's go. Awesome. Let's talk about the show. All right, so I'm going to play a little clip from the trailer for WandaVision just because I can. So here's a clip from the trailer. We're going to start with a non-spoiler review, and then, of course, when we go into spoilers, we'll do a uh, we'll give you a spoiler warning. But we're about to review WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. Heavenly shades of night are calling. It's twilight time. Out of the Wanda and Vision. Oh, we have five pet. This is our home now. I want us to fit in. Oh, this is gonna be a gas! Where did you two move from? How long have you been married? And why don't you have children yet? Our story. I think what my wife means to say is that we moved from... Moved from where? Married when? Damn it, why? Oh, Arthur, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. So we are talking about WandaVision. So this, of course, is going to be a non-spoiler section of the review. Um, so I'll kind of get us kicked off by just saying that when when they announced WandaVision as a concept, like they just announced the show, like the title, and that was in one of the big. I don't know if I don't remember if it was Comic Con or or whatever, but it was one of the big like presentations that they did that showed like all the stuff they had coming out, and they said WandaVision. Oh, like- it's probably like D23 or probably. whatever. Probably, yep. That's what it was. And so I loved the idea of MCU TV shows, and then I was just like, "What WandaVision? What like what? What is that? Like what? Like first of all, the name just sounds ridiculous. Like WandaVision, I don't understand. But then I realize it's WandaVision, so I don't know. But um, I am willing to admit up front right now that I like had completely uh i was i was blown away by it i i loved this show so much like it blew me away in a way that i wasn't necessarily prepared for and it makes me so excited for the mcu on disney plus like it's it's really interesting that this show came out and i think the timing is really unique with you know the pandemic and everything but it's it was just a really interesting experience so what were your guys's uh expectations for it before it before it aired and uh how'd you guys how'd you guys find it do you want to go first mike or do you want me to sure yeah i'll start um i remember when they first announced those shows and i was not super excited Mm -hmm. about the idea of having to um you know add stuff to my pile of stuff to watch and i've said on the show that i you know tv shows tend to be TV shows tend to be uh, a thing that I kind of just push to the side. Like they're to me, they're the easiest thing to not prioritize. So I, I was a little bummed, a little dismayed. I was like, well, I love the MCU. Now I'm going to have to add 
uh, TV shows to this experience. And, you know, I had heard that, um, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. wasn't very good. And so I was like, is this going to match the quality of the movies or is this going to match the quality of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? And oh, yeah. to it, I was like, man, this is gonna, a thing I'm going to have to do. And they announced a lot of things and I was like, eh, okay. Um, but I would say if there was one I was excited for, it was WandaVision. I, I thought that, you know, we only get a little bit of them. So if there was one I was excited for, it was WandaVision. I, I like, they're not, they're really in the back end of the MCU. Yeah. Um, they introduced Wanda in Ultra, uh, or Ultron, and then Vision at the end of Ultron, which mm. is, you know, midway, but they, they haven't been featured a lot. Um, but I think Elizabeth Olsen is extremely gifted and compelling as an actress. Mm -hmm. um, I thought her uh, story arc in Civil War was like the most interesting. I loved yeah. the idea that she was kind of grappling with um, the guilt that, that she feel and they kind of expand on that in the show. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I wish I had a more explicit explanation for why like before WandaVision aired, despite the fact that I don't prioritize TV, mm -hmm. WandaVision week one was like must see TV for me. I, I made a point to sit down. I was excited to have like a weekly episode, not episodic, mm -hmm. um, but I, I I was excited to have an appointment on yeah. Friday. Night. Ritual. Oh, it's, ritual. That's, yeah. yeah, that's what I miss about television that comes out on a weekly basis is mm -hmm. just having that ritual it's like okay hey it's tuesday night it's a a, a new top chef you know yeah. like I, just whatever <laughs> just whatever it is to have well, your right. thing to watch absolutely and friday for me at least is kind of the perfect night for that uh my wife is always kind of a little tired she has to go to bed so uh it was good i really i really think it was a smart decision to release two episodes on that first night mm -hmm. um i think this i loved the first episode oh me too I think the second one was more compelling in a grander scheme, uh, and it kind of gave uh, uh, something. It gave people a little bit more to chew on. Um, but more than anything, I think it was because I love old TV so much, and I loved it so much in my youth that um, the knowing that there would be explicit references mm -hmm. to shows that I grew up watching um, that that I would have that hook that it wasn't just going to be an MCU action or like an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. like procedural. Yeah. I didn't want that. Uh, and so I loved that it was gonna be, I mean, it was really kind of advertised as like a comedy, like a sitcom And Exactly, oh yeah. It was, and I loved how it was advertised really. I just loved the, the that first trailer, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm sold. I, I don't know what yep. exactly this is gonna be, but I am yep. sold on it for sure. Yeah, when it was like when they did the uh, like the Halloween episode in the trailer, mm -hmm. and you could tell what they were like that to me. I was like, yes, yep. Dustin. How how did you feel when they announced it? Like yeah. leading up to the first Friday when they announced it. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I want to say that they announced uh, the title of Doctor Strange. <laughs> Doctor Strange's sequel around the same time. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like all this stuff sort of came out around the same time. You know, uh, yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier, WandaVision, a Loki show. Um, we're going to get Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness, right? And I also want to say that around the time that was announced, we also knew that that um, Elizabeth Olsen was going to be playing Wanda in Doctor Strange, multiverse of madness, yeah, right? I forgot about that. Okay. So having that sort of set up going into WandaVision, you know, I'm sure like most comic book nerds minds went straight to, Ooh, house of M, you know, now that Marvel has the, has the mutants now because they own Fox, like now they can do that. Right. So maybe we'll get house of M. I was instantly um, intrigued and wanted to know what was going to happen, especially because I love Paul Bettany as vision. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. think he, he is so good. He, his, him being in Age of Ultron elevates that film. Like when he shows up, the film gets elevated. Mm -hmm. um, well, when we start talking about some of the episodes of WandaVision, I'm, I'm going to speak very, very highly uh, of on Paul Bettany. Yeah, Vision mm -hmm. as a character. 
And so knowing what happened to him at the end of Infinity War, you know, I feel like a lot of people's questions were, were you know, oh, what about Vision, right? Mm-hmm. What happened to Vision? Did, did she did she get the Mind Stone removed in time? Did she duplicate his 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 cognitive functions, whatever? Um, so to also have Vision involved on top of that, I was pumped. I was all in, and especially with the whole um, depiction of these sitcoms, you know, mm-hmm. my mind instantly went to, you know, reality altering. You know, reality altering. Which, if if you've read House of M, the whole plot of that is is she, she um, actually I believe she kills Hawkeye, and that's what triggers her to uh, lose it, and she changes the entire world, um, and makes everyone mutants for the most part. Like mutants, then are the the mass population of the world. There are humans, wow. but it basically switches the whole. It's a role reversal, right? So mutants don't have to be scared anymore, and you know. But only uh, for a short time. Yeah, only for a I short time. The events of House of M, but the fallout of House of M is no more mutants. Yeah, which then and affected... It speaks the words, no more mutants. And so for, I want to say a decade in the comics, mutants were, were on the verge of extinction. Yeah, so all of this, to me again, really intrigued me, um, especially thinking about uh, Disney getting Fox and mm-hmm. and what that could lead to. So I was all in, hands down. The first first time I nice. um, I saw the trailer, I was invested. Sweet. So I will I will see your House of M. Uh, but my first thought was the was the Vision comic that came out recently, which kind of reimagined their relationship as this sitcom-y, like they are on the cover like with the kids. And it's kind of their everyday lives, and I and and I don't. I think it's very loosely based on that concept. Mm. But um, I think early on, <clears throat> I really like that Dustin and I are kind of coming at it from different angles. He he was like thinking this grand, you know, what? How can it expand what he loves about the MCU? Right. I was like, man, I I want a comedy show, and I think that'll be great. And it gave us both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, I think that's what Marvel's always been good at, right? I mean, with Winter Soldier, we got a spy thriller, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and for a while there, they were really trying to hone in on being able to deliver different genres of entertainment mm-hmm. and still make it cohesive at the same time. And WandaVision is a total triumph in doing that. Yeah, and it, it's – what I loved about it and what I was so enamored with uh, right from the – right out of the gate was how – WandaVision felt like the MCU just going just cranking the dial up on weird and just and just letting it letting it flow cuz it this is such a weird show in in um in conjunction with the 22 whatever movies that we had in the MCU up until this point like obviously like you said there's different genres at play in the in the MCU movies and everything but for the most part all of that the the whole infinity saga is all leading toward Infinity War and Endgame and everything, and here we have something that is outside of that kind of pull toward an Endgame, no pun intended. Um, and it's just, it is so, it feels so free and so like it, at times it's it's so free, so bonkers, so out there and crazy, and and at times a little batshit crazy. But it's also building upon what's come before, like having recurring characters from like like small characters. I, I loved I, I love Randall Park. Like Randall Park is just amazing. And I love seeing He's him awesome. just pop up. Um, Do you want to talk yeah. about uh, procedurally generated shows? I would love and I'm sure I think I've heard it online being pitched a, a Jimmy Woo and Darcy just like X-Files type of show. It, you could make it. You can inject it yes. with comedy, but have a procedural show, and then you can even expand on the MCU on a whole nother level without mm-hmm. heroes, without you know what I'm saying. You just have the references yep. and one kind of in the same realm of I don't know if you guys remember that um, there was a show short lived on NBC that was supposed to exist within the realm of DC Universe, and they actually like it was like a, a gadget company. It had Vanessa oh, Hudgens, yeah, and Ron Hunches, yeah. yeah. Um, and oh, what's his name? I can't remember. He's got red hair. He was on Firefly. He was the pilot. Um, oh, Alan, Alan T- Tudyk. Yes, Alan Tudyk. He was he was like the company CEO. Like it was a funny show. Was it where they um, were like a cleanup crew after this after the superheroes or something? 
<laughs> no, that that would be um, damage control, and oh, that's, that's actually right. a comic book for or a comic from the MCU. And gotcha. they, they had talked about doing something like that around the same time. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I think that that's something that would be uh, interesting, and I think those characters are very entertaining. I I love Randall Park as well. I think mm-hmm. he is. Well, if I could offer my one criticism of the show, it's mm-hmm. Kat Dennings. Uh, and I, t- I texted you after like her first appearance on the show and my opinion didn't change. Okay. Uh, um, you love her. I really can't stand <laughs> her. And I feel, I feel like I'm being harsh. I feel like I'm better than this kind of criticism, but she feels like such an extreme over actor. She feels like a character, like who would be on, I don't know, two broke girls or something. Wait a second. <laughs> She was, <laughs> and she's that all the time. She's yeah. just she's playing that Disney back of the house, and it's it's what I love about the MCU really since the beginning is the earnestness with which they play. Like the fact that they got Robert Downey Jr. to play so seriously <laughs> a, a goofy a comic book show. She acts and. Like, who the fuck is Kat Denning to act like she's better than the material? And maybe that's just me. Huh. Maybe there's something else about her I don't like, but I do not. I, I, I'm I'm so over sarcasm. That's just mm. not my sense of humor anymore. That's not that those are not the performances that I gravitate toward. But like the wink and the nod and the sarcasm, I'm over it. And that's she just she just oozes that. I. I can't argue against that. I I I will say I don't I never really see her as as like performing it as as if she's better than the material. I I never really got that vibe from her performance or anything. But I don't know. I just I I I kind of you texted me about about it and I was like, "You know, I I'm I'm kind of a fan, I guess, of her." And then like like as we were talking, I was like, "Well, I I guess I am. like I it's I it's one of those things where and I've th- been thinking about I've been thinking about um tweeting this at at some point but uh I don't know I just I it, it's a fleeting thought and it goes away but like I like um my tweet is um let's normalize not having an opinion about something um <laughs> like not everything has to be a hard opinion on anything good or bad and like me with Kat Denning is it's like okay she's an actress I've seen her in things I fine um, so I don't, I can't, like, I, I'm not a defender or an Avenger of her, yeah. but, um, <laughs> good one, Matt. Good yeah. one. I like thank that. you, thank you. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, 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 well, I'm a Revenger. Yeah. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, nice. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to wait on this Darcy bit because, yeah. um, I wouldn't say that I'm a fan of Cat Dennings, but I do think that she falls into the same category as a lot of, a lot of Hollywood stars that essentially just play themselves. You got your Michael mm-hmm. Sarahs. Yeah. You got, you know, I mean, even to an extent, Jesse Eisenberg. Like, how how much range does he have, really? Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, it's, I'm kind of tired of that generation of actors. Mm-hmm. But I'll say this. But I'll say this for for when you have that. Uh, I'm going to use Jesse Eisenberg as an example, mm-hmm. right? Um, the Social Network, mm-hmm. great movie, mm-hmm. right? great movie right Mm -hmm. it was great because of how it was written yeah like the the dialogue the material was great that's what made it great his his performance it was good it was it Mm -hmm. was good he did a good job with that material but at some point you have to ask yourself well in in the in the instance of this cat dennings like do you hate her or do you hate the fact that you know sexist hollywood writes her the same freaking material oh, and it's, that's a it's, good point yeah. it's making her do the same thing over and over again because they've classified her in a box that's and so really now good point. Huh. and so now she's not she's not an actor she's just that same character hmm. so i you know you go a little easy on her it might not be her you know what i mean it might not be her you can't hate on her for the yeah, work you're right you're doing. right <clears throat> i should do a little more research i feel like i'm i'm basing it on like she was on letterman or something yeah and yeah or her gender. Like, oh my gosh it's just that character what's that or her so, gender a, or her gender you know <laughs> i don't know i, don't, I, I can't, can't be inside your mind or anything you know but. 
I'm not as sexist. My mom's a woman. <laughs> I can't possibly be. Listen, Kat, if you're I'm listening, nice we... <laughs> if you're listening, Kat, we're we're fans. Um, two of the no. three of us. Um, <laughs> I just like your work. I didn't even say that I was. I have an opinion about your work. Yeah, I didn't even say I was a fan. I just said I don't think that it's Kat Dennings. I think that it's it's the roles that she's put in. I think Hmm. that no matter who was playing that character, you wouldn't like it because of the sarcasm, because of the dead. You're right. I don't. I don't like that character. You're right. 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 But but it's not. It's not her. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Yeah. Like you're right about about her delivery mm. but i don't think that's necessarily her fault it is the same it is the sta- same shtick and i think part of the reason why i think that type of role is something that i would normally enjoy in a, in a show like now i just don't really have much of an opinion about it but i think part of that might be because she's from the thor movies and like the first thor movie was good i feel like she was she was really good in that as comic relief or the kind of uh, sarcastic straight person in, in the in the in the kind of fantastical story, but then Thor: The Dark World kind of took that and just like like with any bad sequel, it just it it turns everything up to like everything that they that they noticed worked. They just hammered home way too hard, and then it just comes out as as just being just overdone and everything. And that that I think kind of left a a sour taste in my mouth and then her role in WandaVision I improved on that. It doesn't make me want to watch Thor the Dark World ever again. <laughs> but um I think she was a better fit in this uh in this show than she was in Thor the Dark World. And I think that that is due to the material. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think that her character fit. I think that the character fit. Yeah. I think that they could have wrote the character better mm-hmm. all around. But the character belonged in this situation of, you know, what's going on, what's happening. Let's bring in all these different, like, really smart people in all these different fields to yeah. try to figure things out. So it, did, it it made sense as far as the plot goes to bring her mm-hmm. in. And like you said, you know, with her being in the Thor movies, I enjoy – that's a big thing that I love about the MCU is is all these little side characters and getting yeah. – Getting Jimmy Woo, right? That we we've only ever seen in Ant Man and the Wasp, right. and having him have this role, learning the sleight of hand, magic tricks, the business yes. card, yeah, right. Like so just good. those little things like that are so pivotal to the success of the MCU as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, so I appreciated her being there, regardless of what Mike says. <laughs> right. Well, can I? Can we? Can we shift to a performance we did? We all did love. Yes. Okay. I I want to talk about Paul Bettany. Nice. Uh, at Vision and and um. <clears throat> so obviously he is a, a you know a, a titular lead character, mm-hmm. um, and he is also obviously the emotional center of the show. But what I think is so successful is that. Um, not only do they do a good job of not beating you over the head that these he's the emotional center of the show, mm-hmm. um, the 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 way it's written is so effective as he's the emotional center of what we're experiencing because he is Wanda's emotional center, and and the way that they make like. The way that they organically make that connection is so expert i i mean it's one of the best like character and writing jobs i can think of in the marvel cinematic universe to yes. to apply a character's emotional feelings and give that to us uh, absolutely and then, he, and then he knocks it out of the park mm-hmm. that plus the fact that he is he he's a he's a sentient whatever they call him like sentient uh weapon or whatever but like he is also the conscience of of like what goes on, and like we'll get to that in spoilers. But when he goes into a like he becomes like aware, more aware of what's going on, and he is like the he's trying to help people, and it's just like it's so it kind of harkens back to that scene in Ultron where uh, he lifts the hammer and everything, and he's like he's the he's the like he's worthy, he's worthy. because he's he's pure and everything. It's just it's really great, really great. Um, should we talk about Monica Rambo? 
Sure. Yes, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed her presence in the show. Nice. I thought it was a cool way. You know, I feel like since Endgame and knowing that the the, the time leap has happened, mm-hmm. right? Since the events of Infinity War, yeah. the Endgame, we've all talked about or thought about. You know, what does that mean? What are the ramifications? I mean, mm-hmm. we've already seen in Endgame when Ant Man sees his daughter. You know, and yeah. she's she's big, she's grown, and he's just like. What you know? So to see that handled in a different way, and also to I I like Captain Marvel as a film. I think it's a fine film. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's uh, uh, I I think that um, a lot of its successes ride on the fact that it takes place in the nineties. Mm-hmm. That it's kind of a throwback. A lot of its charm comes from that, right? Yeah. It being like, oh, she existed before all this stuff, and I think that that's cool that they could play with the timeline. Right. I loved being able to see Ronan before Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. You know, I would have appreciated probably maybe a little bit more from him, but it wasn't necessary. Um, but to take an element from Captain Marvel and 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 like taking young Monica, aging her up and putting her in this show. Yeah. I feel like now I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch Captain Marvel and I'm going to view the whole thing a little bit differently. And I'm going to I'm going to be watching that little girl. Mm-hmm. As like Man, you're gonna be something, you know. I, I don't know. It, it adds yeah. a, a more depth to me and, and enriches the whole ensemble of films, you know, when they do yeah. things like that. When they take like, and I, I granted Monica Rambeau, I believe is a is a pretty big character in, in the comics universe, right? Doesn't she become like something? Is she, she she is a hero <laughs> with powers. Yeah, I wouldn't say that she's, she's like, not a heavy hitter. Gotcha. You know, or a top tier name yeah. by any means, but she's but, not like a Randall Park or anything. She has like a uh, right, yeah. right. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's just something that I love is that they take these like breadcrumbs that they leave in other movies and then they expand them into different. Not like it's we don't wait until Captain Marvel two to see what becomes of Monica Rambo. It's like this is yeah. it. I love the interconnectivity of it. Yeah. Um, well, and we can't. To talk about how well the show is made, uh, like, <clears throat> I think it's so easy to take for granted when a character and a script is so well written that, like, a character's arc is the vehicle for us to go on. Um, and so many good shows, but not great shows, tell you, like, they reveal something to you because the show says, this is the reveal. But what I love is when they tie a mystery to a character who is also going through the mystery. To me, that's effective storytelling and effective, um, it's an effective reveal of a mystery if if the character is, is being revealed that mystery as well. And so to give us that character going, like wondering what the hex is and walking through the hex Mm -hmm. and like, she kind of decides to, uh, I'm spoiling a little bit, but we know that she goes in, she kind of decides to go back in and that's when things start to make sense to us. You called it the hex. uh, (laughs) I will say, um, I I agree. I feel like that that her character was important. She was honestly kind of to an extent, you know, the audience's viewpoint going in. You know, not not in the sense that we were getting to see everything from right. the beginning you know, and right. playing back, but she's also. Uh, but she's trapped in it, like yeah. we are at the beginning. Mm-hmm. At the beginning, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah. But it's also interesting to me. I feel like what she provides in the show is also sympathy for Wanda. You know, like um, yeah. it, what 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 made her so compelling in Civil War was that you know she did something trying to be good and hurt people right mm-hmm. and so she felt guilty of the people that, that were killed because of her actions but you had captain america to, to sit there and tell her yeah. you know listen all we can do is try to do our best and save as many people as we can and right. if that's not good enough then you know what is yeah. uh and so we had that sort of sympathy symp- uh, and even with with vision in civil war we had that sympathy for wanda um and she was the sympathy she she helped remind us that you know she's she's grieving she's sad you know who knows someone of this power level what she's capable of and if it even is intentional mm-hmm. you know yeah should we let the spoiler curtain at this time i i think so yes so we're gonna go into spoilers uh really quick before that just 
overall thoughts, just kind of wrapping uh, wrapping up the non spoiler. Uh, where does this Watch rank? It. Yeah, top three, top three MCU product. Nice. Uh, I will say, I will say, and I, mm-hmm, I am a, I've been a fan of the Marvel television. I watched Shield. I watched mm-hmm. all of Sh- Agents of Shield. Um, I'm not going to say that it was the best TV ever, but it had its high points. It had its low points. At the end, it, it I, I enjoyed myself. Um, I watched some of Peggy Carter. I thought that was a fine show too. But the problem was always that they had Marvel Television and then Marvel Studios films. Mm-hmm. And it almost seemed like they were allowed to sort of share stuff, but with the way that it was being released, they couldn't be a part of the overarching plan mm-hmm. for the movies. And that's where we really lost out. Yeah, they're doing it right this time, and it, it and I've always thought that um, that comic book entertainment, the best medium for it visually is television. Uh, mm-hmm. It I, I watched this these episodes and I was like, man, it's great because I'm I got it. It's like I'm getting an, an issue a month, but mm-hmm. it's an episode a week, and I'm getting this overarching story, mm-hmm. and it just I feel like a kid again, just there's enjoying a, this an over of time. narrative. Yeah. It's an episodic narrative, which is really strong in the first two episodes for mm-hmm. obvious reasons. I would even say the penultimate episode has a huge – that is the one that felt most like a comic book to me. Sure, sure, I could sure. see the pages, and the way that it even ended, me I was just too. hooked. That's this is a the penultimate comic issue. Book. I agree. I agree. Well, yes, yeah, that's the – that's like the back – that that that's the fill-in one more to get to the climax. But like yeah. – some of my favorites are like at the beginning of an arc, like when they set something up, but like you, you face like a, not a heavy, but like a, like a smaller villain and like yeah. you put him away, right? Like Spider-Man hangs him up when, and then at the end it's of that, still, comic, still, you find out that it's still man. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and then by the end you find out that it's actually like, kingpin has hired stilt man to find this thing and that's gonna yeah. be and so that's what's so cool to your point about those first couple episodes is that there's a minor arc and then this uh the serialized obviously mm-hmm. storytelling it's great it's yeah. so good oh yeah um yeah so let's go into spoilers um i'm gonna play a little bit from the from the trailer and then uh, we'll go into spoilers so if you uh haven't watched it and don't want to be spoiled uh Come back and listen, resume this episode when you've watched it. So we're going to go into spoilers after this quick break. We now have first person intel from inside the Westview anomaly. What are we looking at here? Is it... An alternate reality, time travel. It's a sitcom. Starring two Avengers? That's a working theory. Well, I know the apron is a bit much, dear, but I am doing my best to blend in. Okay, so spoilers on for WandaVision. And I just want to say, so I I tweeted this um, around the fourth episode. The the fourth episode is the, the first episode that breaks out of West... West View, West View. Okay. Right. Yes. So, um, yeah. that the concept or the or the feel of that episode felt so like warm to me because it it felt so much like it was the MCU riffing on like the X Files in the Twilight Zone, like having this scenario where like uh, like uh, when when Monica meets with um, uh, Jimmy, what's his last name? Um, Woo. Woo. Jimmy Woo. Um, and they're like, well, you know, the town, like no one remembers the town and everything. I'm like, this is, this is like, this is like, this is the hook of an X-Files or a Twilight Zone episode. And I just, I love that so much. So, um, yeah. So spoilers on have, have what, let's, let's get into it. Um, how'd you guys feel? Sorry, do spoilers? We, do we want to talk about, um, what do we, how do we want to do this? Because let's be honest, yeah. uh, most people in the, in the trailers, if you've seen the trailer, the initial trailer, you've seen episodes one, you've seen episode two, you've seen some of episode three. Yeah. Anything past that is going to most likely be beyond what you've seen. If right. you haven't All watched right. the show. I got I got a, I got a smooth way to do spoilers. Okay. Wait, so... I do too. They're all in purgatory. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> 
Um, um, so there are a lot of dumb people <laughs> didn't like yeah. WandaVision or the end of WandaVision and had mm. a lot to complain about. Uh, I think we've made it pretty clear that that's not us. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't want to speak for you guys, but I was also extremely satisfied with what we got. Oh, hands um, down. Yeah. And so I have, not to throw any particular student under the bus, but okay. a lot. I have a couple of students who are like TikTok personified. Okay. Um, and they just react to things the way that they let TikTok tells them to react. Mm. Mr. White, did you see the end of WandaVision? I was like, of course. And she was like, uh, I didn't love it. And I was like, really? I thought it was amazing. And she was like, yeah, it was pretty good. Or she was like, yeah, I guess it was, but they could have done more. And I was like, that's the internet. You're the internet. <laughs> when she was it, saying it, that. When she was saying that, was she pointing at the words in front, uh, like over her head? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Wow. Yeah. More. Wow. Follow me. Follow me. <laughs> really subscribe, good. subscribe. Yeah. Um. So, but gosh, that is, and I'm so glad I'm not a part of that section of the internet. I'm not a mm. part of that community. Dustin and I. We love to conjecture. Um, we've done. We've kind of been those like boys on the playground, dreaming about our favorite heroes and what mm-hmm. kind of stories they could be for the last twenty years or so. Um, but the one other thing I appreciate about Dustin and, and I think our relationship is that we're also rarely disappointed by what we actually get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're we're pretty good about being like, well, that's what they gave us, and that's kind of rad. I think that reaches all the way back to the first Spider-Man movie, right? Mm. We we had to get over organic web shooters yeah. and, and the Green Goblin's helmet. We and, but, but you know what? Our complaint wasn't rooted in what the internet mm. told us we needed to think. It was rooted in our own expectations from, from what we'd seen on cartoons, what yeah. we had read in comic books, from being fans. And I feel yeah. like that's sort of different. You have a lot of people who just participate in things because it's the the thing to do. And especially, right. you know, if you want to be a part of the conversation, I mean, this is a huge thing, a huge hit show, right? right? So if, it, if, if people still drink at water coolers because they – because they didn't want COVID, they'd be talking about WandaVision, yeah. hands down. And, um, so yeah. it makes sense that she would watch it, but I'd also hear it. She's not a, a real – Fan, I guess I don't know. I don't know this person. Well, I think I don't know this, this goes but the way you describe her and talk about her. Yeah, the the way the it kind of goes back to that idea of the the tweet that I had. Like, let's let's normalize not just not having an opinion about something. Like, yeah. if you don't like yeah. something, yeah. Yeah. fine, but like have valid reasons. Like, I I don't know, but I loved the ending. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. me too. Well, it's not just the ending. So if I could kind of circle back and kind mm. of like make my point. Absolutely. Um, the biggest thing I think people are making a, a, a stink about is that Pietro is nobody. That, okay. That, so. I love it. I, I do yeah. too. I love that that's just a cameo. I, I kind of wrestled with that a little bit because it kind of felt like a, um, it, it, I think w- my problem was I came to it late. So I did not watch this week to week because I just procrastinate and everything. So I had heard like, oh, oh, shit. Evan Peters has a cameo in WandaVision. And I'm like, oh, oh, my God. Like, what does that what are the implications of that? Like, is this an alternate universe? Are they bringing in that universe and everything? And then it's just a a cameo with a little wink at the camera saying like, well, who did she recast him? Um which is it's it's cute and everything. I just had bigger expectations for it, but in the end, I'm fine with it. And I think he did a really good job. I like Evan Peters. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a big problem again is the 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 internet probably uh, <laughs> caused that stink. As far as like, what does this mean for the MCU? And I'm not uh, saying I'm I, I I've tried so hard to not be a part of that. I had some mm-hmm. friends tell me, oh, what do you think's happening? What do you think the bad guy is? And 
I didn't talk a lot. I didn't we predict a lot. Conversations. Well, I have them with you, but other people, I don't really talk to, them, <laughs> you know, because I, and I, and I try to tell them, listen, I don't, I don't really like to guess what's happening because mm-hmm. no matter what I can come up with, it's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm rarely right. Mm-hmm. And not just that, but what they're going to give me most of the time is going to exceed my expectations. Mm-hmm. So I just like going along for the ride for the most part. But, but I do, you know, theorize with you, Mike, because it's just, yeah. I don't know, it's natural, right? It's just mm-hmm. what we do. What we've always done. Um, but so, you know, I don't, I even forget what we were talking about. <laughs> well, just the Evan Peter. And I think it's fun. And oh, I can Evan, remember yeah. this yeah. all. So we, you and I watched, I think, three or four episodes together, just yeah. like we played at the same time and then FaceTime each other. Um, That's adorable. And. We didn't. Thanks. My <laughs> wife made fun of us. <laughs> she did. <laughs> In the room. Yeah. Um, we would like sync it up so the sound was exact. Anyway. Nice. <clears throat> I would take a nap and then wake up to an alarm. Was, oh, I got to watch WandaVision yeah. with Mike. <laughs> there was one where I wasn't sure I was going to watch it. And so I told Dustin to just, just go ahead and watch it mm-hmm. anyway. And so he did. And I, and I was like, but I'll text you when I watch it anyway. And I texted him. I'm like, hey, I'm about to watch. And he watched it again so we could watch it together. Nice. Oh, yeah. I've seen yeah. this whole I've seen the whole show. I, I want to say each episode at least three times. Oh, um, wow. But the first four I've probably seen five or six. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because it was like as soon as I got to a certain point, I was rewatching three episodes just so I could watch the fourth episode. Then I would watch mm-hmm. four episodes before the fifth episode. It's like I was getting myself psyched up every single time. That's awesome. So we didn't watch... Uh, the episode with the Quicksilver review to uh, reveal together. That was the next one. Um, and so he and I, Matt, um, we did the conjecture thing and we kind of okay. had fun with it. And we were like, man, you know, maybe it is House of M. Maybe this mm-hmm. is the birth of mutants. Wouldn't that be cool if? Um, but really, like, I had those ideas. And when I went to bed, it's like I put them in a box and I was like, yeah, but Marvel, like, I'm not going to steal away from them their impetus, their right, right. to just have fun yeah. with a character yeah. either. Like, why, it was a- it's the cool, it's, her brother is dead. How, why not bring that character back and then play on the sitcom trope of a different actor playing that character? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're not it- allowed to make it cheeky. Because the internet will go nuts. That's mm. the shame. That's a shame. For yeah. for a show that I feel like was so meta and self-referential, because I mean, essentially it was mm-hmm. a conscious n- known that we are in a show. Yeah. yeah. You know, their behaviors all around were meta. That was a meta Easter egg. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it really was a call to a whole nother film franchise, yeah. uh, and but a, still an Easter egg for people who are a fan of the character and what he did in those movies. I loved his version of Quicksilver. Better. Yeah, he's better. Better. He's the better he is. Agree. So it was kind of it was kind of cool to see him in that extent. And it didn't matter if he was really Pietro or not. I didn't care. Yeah. I love him as an actor too. I think he's fun, mm-hmm. and I think he was fun in the show. Let's. So then the other reveal. Go ahead. And well, the other reveal, the other spoil, I guess, the ending, the thing that people were complaining about um, was that there was no big bad. And I'm like, it's a TV show. It, Wanda and yeah. grief was the big bad. right. The, yeah, the emotional story is what was captivating to me the entire time. Like I, like I did not have any of that conjecture or anything, because I was just like, I was sitting there watching, and I was like, okay, this is her grief, and she's processing grief and everything. It's like the the emotional journey is what's important. It, it that's yeah. frustrating. It was, that, you it know. was clear. It was pretty clear early on to me that this was Wanda and that it was going to be another thing that she was going to have to grapple with. Mm-hmm. I will say, I think Dustin and I spoke Mephisto's name once or twice, just wondering, just having fun. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and again, I think that's rooted into our knowledge of the comics, right. you know, because we, we knew that uh, uh, in the comic books, when she has her kids, there yeah. is supposed to be like a piece mm-hmm. of Mephisto's um, uh, soul or something yeah. as a part of them. So they're connected right. to him to some extent. Right. So that, obviously be brought up just as conjecture again because of oh well, who is it who's 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 making things happen who's making yeah. it worse but 
Hmm. I remember a specific thing that you and I said, Dustin, was like when when we were both, I think you were initially the first to um, kind of thumb Agnes as somebody to keep our keep our eye on. And we were like, yeah, she's definitely up to something. And I think oh, yeah. our exact words or, or, or our exact thought was, um, yeah, but it's Wanda's, st- like I, Wanda caused the anomaly. Yeah. So then, mm-hmm. then to what, like, did Agnes sneak in? What I remember specifically, no, like thinking something was up with Agnes, mm-hmm. Agatha, eventually. Yeah. But still being like, yeah, but Wanda is the villain. Wanda is the problem. I, I really yeah, like absolutely. that. I really like how they presented Wanda as the the problem, the cause of this, and and they didn't sugarcoat that. Like they they the idea of the town townspeople like hurting from this is was like really She's wet. pretty dark. Yeah, it was it was yeah. really great. Um, yeah, and the whole the whole fact that this this whole show. At least from my perspective, see, like, it was a weird, like, um, it was a weird show, but it was also, it was amazing to me that this was, this was the Scarlet Witch origin story. Like, yeah. that, yes. that was just so cool to me. Um, this yeah. long into dark. that franchise. Yeah. It's yeah. Dark. And, that and last, I, those two episodes are dark. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. When they encroach her like oh, a yes. witch. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh. That that episode again. I think I said it earlier. That hands down was my favorite episode because mm-hmm. that was her origin story. We got it was so great. Yeah. Again, another thing that the MCU does so well, right? We had heard, and I, and I spoke to Mike about this a little bit. Um, that we had heard the story of of Wanda and Pietro's parents dying in Age of mm-hmm. Ultron. They tell and the bomb them, not going off. And the bomb yeah. not going off. And it sinks dark, right? And them just waiting there to die for two days. Mm-hmm. We heard that story. But then this show let us see it. Yeah. It let us see every bit of trauma that went along the way. We got to see her whole path from beginning to end. And there's so much symbolism uh, in the show that is so, I feel like, maybe under-discussed. I don't know. I haven't listened to a lot of discussions about the show. But, mm-hmm. like, I've, I've talked to Mike um, just appearance-wise, right? Even before I knew exactly what had happened, as as they progressed, by the time they got to the third episode, I was like, "Well, we know it's Wanda, and she's getting more powerful." It because she's going from black and white to color, mm-hmm. right? I mean, now she's pregnant. She's made herself pregnant. Her 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 powers were were growing, right? Even before she, we got the full blow on like yeah. Scarlet Witch at the end, like you know, her powers were growing from her grief, and she mm-hmm. wasn't in com- complete control. But when she extends the boundaries, oh my god, yes. I got I got so pumped, I was so, so thrilled. All of a sudden, the circus pops up yes. out of the military tents and well, stuff. I was I so was excited, cool, but I was like, I was like, no, well, like, yeah, absolutely, turn. Mm-hmm. absolutely, yeah. but, was like, she's the bad guy. But the most compelling villains are the ones you can sympathize for. Yep. Yeah. And I feel like I'm hoping that, that the setup for Doctor Strange and the and the Multiverse of Madness has something to do with Wanda. I want Wanda to go dark side because I mm-hmm. feel like it will make for a more in, rich story. Yeah. Um, and she might not. She might. This might be as bad as we see her get. I don't know. What, the, it, oh, unless Vision comes back. Well, not just that, but she has that uh, the the dark hold, um, the dark evil book of the dead. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Who knows? A Necronomicon. Know. Yeah, exactly. Right. The Necronomicon. Ash is going to show up, baby. <laughs> well, isn't Freddy, Ra- Freddy's cackle at the end? Is, yeah. yeah. Isn't Raimi directing? He Multiverse is. Raimi is oh, directing shit. Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Raimi is directing Multiverse of Madness. Um, so who knows? We might get that. Right? Yeah. She's already in that cabin in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you know, there's no trees around. We yeah. might get the Evil Dead cam. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that, that episode, I'll say this too, mm-hmm. um, symbolically, and I don't know if I said this to, to you, Mike, or not. I think I did. Is that as I was watching that last episode, or that penultimate episode, right, when she sees the bomb drop and she stares at it and she's waiting for it to go off. Mm-hmm she is she is the bomb from that point on she is a ticking time bomb of power 
Like huh. that's the first moment that she actually utilizes her magic according to uh uh Agatha Harkness, Agatha. right? Yeah. Um she put, did a probability spell, right, to keep the bomb mm-hmm. from going off. And from that moment on, everything that had happened was just building up on her pain and her grief and her misery and it was getting her closer and closer to this time where she just lost control mm-hmm. and just gave in to her sadness and and did something crazy like m- took over everyone in, in Westview <laughs> you know so I thought that was kind of poetic too in a sense nice. and not to mention I think we can all agree when when it's the the conversation between her and Vision about Pietro's death that was some of the best back and forth dialogue in my opinion in the entire uh, uh, series when they're um, watching the shows the, the yeah when they're watching the shows yeah. and again that connecting to the fact that all this is so much, uh, you know, the, the the being in a television show is her yeah. escaping the grief mm-hmm. and the pain. The one you know? that was so memeified, like what yeah. is what is grief if not love? I I'm sorry, I hate that that got memeified because I think that's beautiful. I, yeah, I do I too. too. Yeah. I, I feel like it's it's it, it's going to be over. Well, it's always going to be special. I think it's mm-hmm. not going to be ruined. Yeah. But it's it's just another example of the internet trying to make a baby Yoda. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just, yes. I, I yes. will say um, my favorite my favorite line of the whole show, my favorite character vision of the whole show mm-hmm. is at the end when they're saying goodbye. Yes, I was going to say that. Okay, okay. Do you, yeah. can I? Can oh, I, go right ahead. Yeah. When she's going downstairs and has already said goodnight, and she turns the lights out, mm-hmm. and he turns it back on. And she's like, why, like, why'd you turn the lights on? And he's like, well, I just wanted to see you one more time. And she goes, well, and he goes, and there you are. And I just, so oh, nice. that the is only- so fucking beautiful. And, mm-hmm. and it, and to me, that's like, like a lesser show he would have said, and there you are a vision. You know what <laughs> I mean? That's, that's- that's parenthetically implied, <laughs> isn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. 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 I had a reference to what he is, what the show is. He he is now, right, like everything that she conjured because of the love, right? He is, he, that version of him mm-hmm. is her love personified. Yes. He is her the same way in mm-hmm. that moment. What yeah. I what I loved about that last scene with them was when he said I can't remember exactly what he said but he said something to the effect of like I've I've been a man with no body I've been a man with no something and a man with something and then I I wonder what I'm gonna be next and I'm just like yeah. oh well, I love it with with that line what I love is there's this this almost tongue in cheek implication that he or he knows what happened to the other vision yeah. Wanda doesn't he does. so yeah. while he's saying that he knows yeah he had future in another in another form mm-hmm. but she doesn't know that so it's just like but he doesn't also doesn't want to like you know it set her up she's saying goodbye you don't want to set right. her up to say goodbye yeah. and then just go find something else yeah um i'll say that i i think that that scene was was beautiful and i think that the moment when he asked her what he is and the way that she described it yes. was really good but i do think it was a missed opportunity and maybe that's just my opinion that she just could have straight up said you're my love persevering Mm. And it would have been yeah. a real. She says, "You're my love," right? She says, "You know all this stuff," but she could have just said in that moment, "You're my love, persevering." And I felt like it would have hit really hard. It would have had a really hard emotional moment for for people who were invested in the show because of the callback of it, you know. Yeah. And her actually saying that back to him. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, uh, for a minor nitpick. I was okay with Vision being dead forever. As a sto- I mean, yeah. as a fan of the character, not. I, right. You don't want your favorite characters to die. Mm-hmm. But as a as storytelling, I love things to end, man. I yeah. hope Iron is dead forever. I, they, I, they better never find a way to bring Tony Stark back. Now, the you only know? thing that I'm interested in with Tony Stark is they're doing an Ironheart show, and I would think it'd be really cool is if, just like in the comics, if they got Robert Downey Jr. to essentially do a reverse Paul Bettany and be her AI voice inside the Iron Man. That would be cool. Oh, that would be, shit. Yeah. That would they be did awesome. That in, they did that in the comic books. Yeah. So huh. she, instead of him talking to Jarvis or Friday, she'd be saying Tony, and he would be the voice of the AI. I think that's the only way that it's cool and, and really works out. I, it's yeah. just 
first man. Paul Bettany. I I love that. I fuck. I love that. That's good. Let me tell yeah. you. Another, let me tell you another thing really quick. Mm-hmm. That same student to which I was referring before. So uh, it's I have one week until my yearbook is due, and mm-hmm. so I'm just showing movies in my intro to journalism class because mm-hmm. screw it, I don't. Care. <laughs> so we're watching Age of, Age of Ultron, and she and so Paul Bettany is the voice um, of Jarvis. And she's like, I just can't unhear it. She's like, all what? I hear is vision. It's it's like, I can't I can't unhear vision. And I'm like, <laughs> but Jarvis came first. It is vision? <laughs> yeah, like you're you're like Jarvis you're is viewing the internet. Like I guarantee she saw a TikTok of someone being like, Did you know that they got the same guy who did the voice oh, of God. vision later oh. on? Like just that dumb. Uh, I I, hope, I doubt she listens. I, <laughs> right. I, 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 I uh, but just that stupid uh, surface level surface experience. Level. Yes. Thing. Yeah. I can't unhear it. It is vision. Yeah. That is him. It's it's. And if you knew, if you if you had one foot in. Mm-hmm. deeper than your toe you would understand that the reason you can't unhear it is the point right i mean what's crazy is even in that in that movie in that movie you're watching that movie right, right? here's ultron as like a a, a a ball of information first and here's a ball of information that's jarvis and he's like <laughs> your mouth functioning that's jarvis mm. okay before vision's ever around and even in that movie that's jarvis so no, I'm with you, man. That yeah. that can be infuriating. Well, to be um, fair, be I can't man. listen. I can't listen to Ultron without thinking of Robert California. So, from the <laughs> office. <laughs> uh, but no, I totally get that's like that's just it's it's taking some like it like a like you said a surface level thing or a surface level observation and like letting it snowball into a, into an opinion. Yeah. That yeah. it's it's a non-opinion, but you're presenting it as an opinion, as as a critique or a criticism of something, without like fully, like using your critical thinking skills. Yeah. And we're yeah. we're obviously uber fans. We're mm-hmm. obviously like the super nerds that are that that traditionally think we're at the top of the food chain as far as knowing what's going on. But mm-hmm. I think. Definitely me, and I and I'm gonna speak for Dustin as well. We're also not we don't like gate fandom. Like yeah. if you love it, I, I don't care which one was your first one. I don't care how much you love it. I, I'm glad you love it, and you can have it any way you want it, mm-hmm. just as much as I have it. It's yours as much as it is mine, yeah. and I love that notion. What I don't love is if your surface level. And argue about it online passionately. Right. You know yep. it. Yeah. That's what I can't stand. Yep. If you Touch- just want to engage by arguing. Yeah. Yep. That's, sort- right. That's now surface level engagement. Yep. Yeah. To sort of go back to um, what you were talking about as far as fin- finality, like you were okay with vision being dead. I mean, I understand that because I'm somebody who. I, I I probably would have been disappointed if Iron Man didn't die in Endgame. I was mm-hmm. championing that from the first time they said Infinity War Part One and Part Two. Yeah. Um, I was like, "Well, they got to kill off Iron you Man. Better die it, someday." Yeah. It, it's the only <laughs> thing that makes sense is you got to give him that hero's death uh, because yeah. even at the first Avengers movie, when Cap says, "You know, uh, you're not the kind of guy who who who, who puts you know jump on the grenade, you know, do something." You know, Take take the hit for the rest of the team, right? You're 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 just not that guy. You're not gonna to sacrifice mm-hmm. yourself for the greater good. And while we got a little glimpse of that in the end of the first Avengers movie, right? Him taking that nuke up into the sky, yeah. right? Yeah, that's not enough. You know what I mean? Like for 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 his own attitude towards himself, for his own struggle to try to leave a better. Uh, mark on the world than what everybody has told him he's going to leave. He needed to die. Yeah. And 
So I completely understand. I'm with you. But the thing about Vision is he's not a person. I mean, right. he takes, he's already, he was Jarvis, then he was Vision, then he's this other yeah. Vision, and now we're getting a new Vision because he's a robot. Like, it makes sense to, for them to figure out a way to bring back an android. Yeah. You know? Yep. So, uh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, and and there's precedent for a white Vision from the comic books as well. Mm, so yeah. that in itself was also kind of another, that was an Easter egg. Okay. In and of itself, that was kind of a little treat, a little Easter egg for nice. fans who, who knew about that version. And then we got that conversation between the two of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, wow. who's the real vision? Such a great dialogue yeah. and a so really true. great duality that he that he gave in that performance. Mm -hmm. Even with that makeup, that white vision, the way he can he can construed his face when he was delivering that dialogue was cold. Mm -hmm. It was calculating. It 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 was a weapon. Right. And then he had this softer side at the same exact time. It was really cool to see that duality play across. And Paul Bettany knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. You know, until the very end, until the very oh, yeah. end, he's like, I am vision and then takes off. It's like, well, there we go. That's that problem solved and created. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the uh, last one of the last lines between him and Ultron in Ultron, where they're kind oh, of yeah. just talking like kind of, I was born know, yesterday. I was born yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, uh, we should probably wind down a little bit here. Um, yep. Any any parting thoughts or any other kind of overall thoughts on on Wandavision and uh, what are how stoked are you guys for uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier? I'm gonna jump in on this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I was that was the show I was most excited about. Me, Me too. too. Yeah, Be, because ever since Captain, uh, I mean, I loved the first Captain America. I know Mike has his thoughts on it. I loved all the Captain America movies, and I felt like they only got better. Right? Mm -hmm. It was a franchise that only exceeded itself, whereas you know other ones had peaks you and like valleys. Civil War yeah. more than Winter Soldier. In Winter Soldier, I think as an MCU film, it it is as yeah. a, as a standalone film. Winter Soldier is better, but at, when you look at it all as a trilogy, I think that it's a better film well said, because it leads yeah. somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. if and, until that movie, until Civil War was made, yeah, hands down, Winter Soldier. But if I had to pick, and also it's it's kind of a strange category. Civil War, it, while it is a Captain America centric film, yeah, it's Avengers it's, it's Avengers, exactly. yeah, it's Avengers, yeah. So yeah. Um, it, it's sort of in a realm all on its own to an extent. That was mm -hmm. sort of the beginning of them really blending in the 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 Avengers into different films. You know, that's yeah. that's what led to. You Why know, did they do that? Why did they? I wonder if there was any. Uh, I mean, we're really just naming a thing. Who gives a shit? But like, was was there any part of them that was like, we want to, we're ready to make the next Avengers, but the calendar says Captain America. Well, I think the Russo brothers had a lot to do with it. You know, I think they Probably. handled a lot of characters in Winter Soldier and yeah. they were given Civil War and they were like, okay, Civil War. Well, you know, we know the material. You got to have Avengers in it. I mean, if you're going Civil War, you got to get the people what they want. So mm -hmm. they had to bring in two different Avengers teams to fight each other. And yeah. I think that the studio was pro probably approved that because we're like, well, Winter Soldier was great. Winter Soldier was super successful. Fans loved it. Critics loved it. It was awesome. So let's let them do this and sort of let that be the test run to see if they can handle an Avengers film. Hmm. And after that, lo and behold, they got Infinity War and, and Endgame. Yeah. But I will say uh, with Falcon and Winter Soldier, on that previous episode that I was on, we talked about what is going to um, – what's going to close out civil war? Like what, mm. what is going to uh, 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 bring that chapter to an end? Cause we didn't really get that at any point. It was just like, well, aliens are attacking. I guess we've got to put our, our problems to the side. And then like, it's not like there was any UN approval for the, the, the war in Wakanda, yeah, whenever yeah. it happened. Right. So we didn't really get a chance to see what the ramifications happened in regards to the Sokovia Accords after the uh, after Avengers Infinity War, especially, and then even after Endgame. Mm -hmm. So Falcon and Winter Soldier is going to do that. They're bringing back Zemo. So yes. we're going to have Zemo. Uh, we're going to see, you know, the, the U.S. agent, right, the, the United States government trying to basically push their own version of Captain America onto the public. Um, and, and I'm interested to see what's going to happen with Falcon and Winter Soldier Right, even in Wandavision, you know, um, the the head, the director of Sword, he he said, you know, we owe you a debt of gratitude, right? We know, you know, what you did, mm -hmm. and they even talked about how Wanda could have taken 
Thanos easily, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If, you know, without everything else, if it was just a one-on-one, she would kill him. Mm-hmm. Hands down, I think she's completely capable of destroying him. Without mm-hmm. an Infinity Gauntlet, she could have taken him. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I feel like um, it kind of hinted at the fact that there was no ramification. She wasn't a criminal anymore. They were letting her walk around. Mm-hmm. But we don't know how the status quo has changed in regards to those accords. And I think we're going to get that with the show. Interesting. Yeah. Um, that reminds me real quick, um, going back to Monica Rambo, um, that her intro, I don't, I don't, it's not her introduction, but that scene that opens one of the episodes where we see like her backstory and everything where she comes mm-hmm. back from the blip. Like, so cool. It's that, that moment running through the running through the hospital and everything and learning, like figuring out like what I happened me too. Yeah. And like, yeah. it's something that like, if you think too hard about it, I mean, it makes like, there's no fucking like people like that would be, it, it's insane. It's insanity yeah. and everything. But just seeing that happen, like seeing that the way that it's presented in the show, it just, it felt like, I, I like, it's- like you said, I, I want more of that. It's yeah. really depressing if you think oh, too much. Oh, absolutely. About it. Well, that's oh, yeah. the thing. Is it? But they depicted in Wandavision, um, and I think again they're trying to tie it into the whole theme of grief, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, these people have lost time. She wakes up, and the last thing she thought, her mom was going into an operation. Yeah. Um, and her chances were good, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah. my mom was healing from surgery. She's dead. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't God. get a chance to say goodbye. A, yeah. So it's, her grief played into the show. Yeah. Um, but also. It was good to see something like that after you see Far From Home, you know, Spider-Man Far From Home. And, and yeah, and they just they show, oh, the band's back in the gym. You know, like it it, yeah. it was it was comedic and funny the way they, they showed it, but just fine. You know, they were trying to play it light and get into the humor and the, the energy that is a Spider-Man yeah. movie. But it was nice to see that darker side of it and mm-hmm. and and the more, I guess, truer tone of how it would really be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Just so, so fucking good. Um, yeah. And like, I mean, it's a, it's a huge, I mean, obviously it's a massive thing in the, in the canon of the MCU. And like, I, I would love, 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 love to see more of that. Like if they were to tell more stories in that time or, or yeah. use that to inform stories going forward. I, cause it's just, it's such a captivating and like open-ended thing. Like they can have so many different applications to it and everything. It's just, oof, you know, really thinking of it now and far from home, like mm-hmm. I'm just coming up with this now. Um, isn't that kind of how teenagers would act? Like, aren't they kind of <laughs> terrible? Yeah. Like the fact that they're like, <laughs> we I just can't not hear it. Here. Isn't that I bullshit? Just... Like yeah. That's how. That's how. It, that's what a teenager would say about that super serious situation. Yeah, they'd be like, yeah. "Oh, I came back and it's been five years. I wish it was more. Um, yeah. I wish." Yeah. <laughs> um, Do I get yeah. to drink alcohol now? Yeah. <laughs> well, they made that joke on the plane. Right. Right. right? <laughs> Wait. No. 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 He was in the. He blipped out. He's. He's not actually twenty-one. That, that's yeah. how teenagers would act. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is true. You're. You're right. Oh, just and. Oh God! Like uh, they would never, obviously, never do this. But just think about the people who blipped out while they were on a plane, and then blipped back in. Yeah, I didn't even what think about, about that. The pilots who blipped, and then the people yes. in the plane who didn't blip. Were they accounted for in the half of everybody, or were they collateral oh, damage? Yeah, man. I think collateral damage. Questions. Yeah, I feel like mm. well. yeah. I had not thought about that at all, no. and and. I'm kind of ashamed to say that. I, you know, I was just like, oh no, right. Black Panther. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. No, our king, our king. Where's he going? Ooh. All right. Well, should we wrap this up then? Yeah, let's do it. Man. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, that, uh, that'll do it for our review of WandaVision. Can't wait for what's to come in the MCU and everything. Hopefully we get like a release date or something or they figure out something for um, Black Widow Um, because that looks interesting as hell. So we'll we'll see. Uh, Dustin, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. Oh, I, I love you. You're you're a wonderful Aww. person. Um, and too. I love what you do. I think that um, 
Man, you've been doing this for such a long time, yeah. and I think you have a lot to be proud of oh, as far as you. what you've accomplished with um, with the podcast and uh, just keeping anything going creatively for a long period of time is is taxing. Um, yeah. So God bless you, oh, and, you. Um, you know, you better have me back for oh. Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's oh, all I got to say. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It became a series. <laughs> yeah. And then you know what? You'll be our first guest on our podcast. I there love it. Go. I love it. We'll have you on for our WandaVision episode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love it. So what were your thoughts, man? Right. I don't remember. Um, and so speaking of doing things for a long time, you guys have been making music together for 22 years. Uh, so tell us once again uh, where we can find your work and all the stuff that you guys both do, uh, both separate and together. The band is called As Good As It Gets. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash as good as it gets music, or just search for any of our videos. We make weekly or monthly uh, acoustic songs on our own Patreon, patreon.com slash as good as it gets. And I'm on Instagram as the no hit wonder and Twitter at I am Mike White. And I tweet all that stuff all the time. So nice. if you might be interested in our music, just follow me. I'll show nice. you. Awesome. Yep. And uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> you know, send me a friend request. Nice. I probably you, won't respond. You can but... find him when I tag him and all the stuff that. Yes. <laughs> and go. so I'm so terrible at the internet. And as a thing, I'm not good at it. Um, you know, like I said earlier, I have probably three Twitter accounts and I don't mm. know how to get into any of them. Um, <laughs> I just don't know what the passwords are. What. Mm. You know, the email address I used, I have no clue. Um, but so I don't really know if you can find me out there as much. Mike is the best source for getting to me. Um, so follow Mike. You'll find me. Um, I feel like there was something else I was going to say. And now I can't really rightfully remember. So it must not have been that important. Um, yeah, check out our music. Um, it's something that uh, I've loved doing for a long time. And and um just making music with Mike has been uh, uh, it's been it's really therapy for me as a whole you know nice. through through my adult life it has gotten me through a lot and having somebody That's to awesome. share in that has meant a lot to me so check that out and you won't regret it because uh, you know not to toot our own horn but I think we're pretty I think we're pretty darn talented oh New absolutely yep. yep and then another one maybe winter maybe fall maybe early next year i don't know right. we'll try to get it out as soon as we can one out before our 20th anniversary in october that i can promise that's awesome yeah i yeah i can't wait Yep. And uh, Mike, before we go, uh, I did send you a playlist of Motion City soundtrack songs. And so now you've listened to it and you recognize that they are the only and best band ever of all time. So when are you going to do a cover of a Motion City soundtrack song? Oh, I would do a cover of a Motion City Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, yeah. Let's pick one and let's do yes. one. For, we were talking about doing a cover performance, like a cover live stream. Yes. Uh, so that, I, covers. Yes. But it's got to be from Commit This to Memory, right? It's got to be from from Commit This to Memory. Yeah. I guess. I mean, no, yeah. Just just from what I – we had to pick something that I know and I've loved and mm. listened to, and that's the last real album. Honestly, man, like the older I get, the more I become like 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 a, our parents, you know, like you mm. only listen to the music that you know, up to a certain <laughs> point, and then, you, you know, you but, catch a few things here and yeah. there. That's why but, I listen to Motion yeah. City soundtrack. <laughs> like, yeah, right. You're still listening to them, yeah. absolutely, right? I'm, I'm still I'm got it. to name our next record Relic and just have a picture of Dustin on the cover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Covered in, in fake uh, cobwebs and dust. That's it. <laughs> Sitting in a chair, just like yeah. this one. I love it. All right. Well, the well, let's. Uh, wow. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Uh, thank you, guys. And uh, Dustin, thank you so much for, for coming on and everything. And yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I don't remember how I end these things. <laughs> so, uh, outro music. Okay. So, all right, well, that's our episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. And we'll see you next time.
And now, here's a short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. To hear the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. Um. <laughs> so, we're about to record a review of WandaVision, and I wanted to ask you guys as a Patreon topic to kind of uh, tease out the episode, uh, what sitcom would you guys want to be in like live in as like a fantasy world or or what have you that's a good question that's such a that's a fun question it is a good question and i i mike told me about it um yet last night so i've had a little bit of time to think about it today and i i posed him the question if like um animated shows also count in this category he said it does yeah i would i would say so okay So with that, I actually have two answers on my part because I couldn't settle between two, right? I, I number one, it's going to be Futurama. Ooh, nice, nice. Right? It's it's a wild sci-fi f- fun show. It's a cartoon, so I will basically live forever. You know, mm. there is no there's no aging. You <laughs> never die, and the adventures will always continue. Um, you know. Robots that drink alcohol and uh, I don't know. It just seems like a blast. A delivery mm-hmm. boy goes to space. You know, I oh, could yeah. be, I could be anything. You um, are Fry. <laughs> I am not Fry. I'm more. I'm. I'm his brother, uh, yeah. Yancey. Um, but for the other one, I would have to say a good place. Ooh. Okay. Oh, man. I would say a good place. And it's kind of the opposite, right? I'm I'm already dead. Uh, so yeah. whereas I don't live forever in the cartoon, I actually get to um, – and if, if you've seen The Good Place, you know you know the, how it plays out and everything. Right. But the show is just so so beautiful. And even to be a bit player oh. in that in that series would have been amazing, you know, to be an actual character in there. To go on that journey of both self-discovery, mm. reflection, growth um, – so in this sad. in this hypothetical fun situation, would you th- would you consider yourself like are you on the pilot episode? Like are you Chidi's neighbor and you become one of the crew? Yes, I'm essentially the other person who doesn't belong in the good place. Okay. <laughs> right, the right. Obsessive Viewer podcast is edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by obsessiveviewer.com. For a full archive of our episodes, go to obsessiveviewer.com slash O V archive. You can also like our Facebook page and join the OV Facebook group at facebook.com slash the obsessive viewer and follow us on Twitter at obsessive viewer and at obsessive tiny and follow our recurring co-hosts at I am Mike white. That's me at R a Fekis and at burger underscore lurker. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate, or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, visit our T Public store. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at tpublic.com, T-E-E, public.com. For information about our annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find Anthology, Matt's solo podcast covering The Twilight Zone, and other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows at anthologypod.com and on Twitter at OVAnthologyPod. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower series, at TowerJunkiesPod.com and at TowerJunkiesPod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, 
which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda at thesecularperspective.com. The theme music for The Obsessive Viewer comes courtesy of the band Loud Like from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. Additional bumper music is provided courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at facebook.com slash asgoodasitgetsband. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty! Kitty!